Hello, my Lily fans, and welcome. Today, we're going to talk to you about uses for some uncommon oils that you may have sitting around collecting dust, or maybe you haven't opened them yet, whatever it may be. Maybe you forgot why you used them or why you, sorry, why you bought them in the first place. So I did a little um, survey poll in my Facebook group, and I'm going to go over the oils that they requested on how to use. So I learned a lot with this. It was some good reminders for me because I had to really do some digging on some of these oils because there's not ones we use a lot. And um, anyway, it got me excited to use a few of them. So I hope it will do the same to you. Um, so when I do my notes, I'm going to have to be reading and checking through some of my notes because this isn't stuff that I just know by heart, right? Because it's stuff that's a little more uncommon. So here we go and let's get started. So the easiest way to use any oil that maybe you're unsure of is to diffuse it. If you, especially if you like the smell of it. <laughs> um, and if you, if you don't particularly like the smell of it, it's totally fine to try mixing it with another oil because that may be the key to your success there. Because sometimes when an oil is blended with another oil, it has a different scent to it, brings out a different, um, part of that aroma anyway. So like I, for instance, love rosemary in some particular blends, but I do not like it by itself, but I love it in with like some peppermint and orange or another citrus oil. Anyway, so just a thought. Um, so go ahead and diffuse it. And I always love to Google like, um, for instance, like coriander diffuser blends, and then it will pull up all these different ideas for me. That's always a fun way to find some good diffuser blends. Another idea is to use it topically on the bottom of your feet. It's always a good way to go if you're unsure of where to put an oil. I love the reflexology chart is kind of a reminder of the bottom of our feet being a map for our whole bodies. And so it's great to use your oils on the bottom of your feet. Just get it in topically, get it on topically and be benefiting from it emotionally and physically. Okay, so first up we have is myrrh. So myrrh, first thing to note about myrrh is that it is normal for it to crystallize and kind of um, gel up in the bottle. So if that's happened to yours, then don't worry. That is normal. That happens over time. It kind of crystallizes a little bit. And there's a few things that you can do to kind of, kind of help that. So it, the worst place that it happens is right around the cap where you're trying to you know, take it off and on. And gosh, mine has gotten so stuck before. But anyway, if you run your bottle under some, just some warm water to help soften it up, that will help get it going. Um, it's also key to keep your lid and the little um, ridges there where you twist on the cap really clean. So when you're done using your myrrh, just make sure you clean all of that oil off of that area. You can also clean it up with some fractionated coconut oil and keep it, keep it clean that way so you can get the lid on and off. Um, and then if your myrrh in the bottle solidifies itself or crystallizes, you can just put some fractionated coconut oil in there. I've done that with a bottle um, to kind of help because then I have some diluted myrrh. So then I don't feel like I'm wasting anything. I'm still being able to use my myrrh and not worried about it being crystallized because it's a little bit of a pricier oil. And obviously we don't want to be wasteful with these, right? They're so precious to us. So myrrh, I think is really interesting in some diffuser blends. And here are a few, I just Googled doTERRA myrrh diffuser blends and up pops this, these great recipes. Um, I love, um, what's her name? Jade Bladen. She does these great little top 10 uses for oils and some other emotional things. I have a few of her images in here. She's, she's great. She's a fun one to follow anyway. So myrrh, um, I love my favorite uses for myrrh are for gum health. So I'll sometimes put some in my oil pulling chews, or I'll put it directly on my gum. If I have a sore um, or something going on, I'll sometimes get those um, like kind of stress sores in my mouth and I'll just put the myrrh right on them and it helps amazingly. So um, on an emotional level, you can apply myrrh around your belly button, around your navel. And it will help with feelings of safety in the world. And it is amazing. If you're struggling with the world, not feeling like a safe place for you, try myrrh out because it will, it will really help 
instill some of those feelings for you. So um, it's a really good one for your skin, especially wrinkles. Definitely add myrrh as a part of your skincare regimen. And it is safe to apply it neat, which means you can apply it straight to, straight to your skin. So there you go. So give myrrh a try if you have that one in your collection, collecting some dust. Okay, geranium. Geranium is one that I did not like at the beginning. And I must admit, it maybe was one of the last oils that I purchased. I just really didn't want the smell of it. But the more I've used it, the more I do like it. Um, so it is good in some floral diffuser brands. Really good if you throw it with some citrus, like that first one, spring fevers, geranium, grapefruit, and lime. Or um, oh, what was the other one that was? Oh, there's just some great combos in there. Anyway, the other spring breeze, yeah, geranium, lemon, and tangerine. And again, I just Googled geranium doTERRA diffuser blends and this one pops up which is a doTERRA one anyway geranium I also use in a recipe with frankincense as a makeup remover and I just keep it in a little roller and just kind of apply it on rub it off anyway it smells really good with frankincense and I've also used it before in this DIY hair mask with just coconut oil olive oil egg yolk and then you put geranium in it I you know you put it in and um, just kind of dampened hair, like not really wet, wet, but just kind of wet a little bit and then wrap it all up and you wrap your head up in a little grocery sack or something, whatever shower cap, whatever you have that you want to use and let it soak for like 45 minutes and then go wash your hair. Anyway, I love hair masks. Those are really fun. And oh, emotionally, that's what I was gonna say. Emotionally, geranium is the oil of love and trust. So a great one to apply over your heart or on the bottom of your feet, if you don't really love the smell of it, and it can really help you um, create those feelings. Okay, next we have Tulsi or Hazel, Holy Basil. And this is a newer oil. And anyway, do you think it smells like basil? If you have it, have you smelled it? It's kind of interesting, right? How this, how it goes. And um, this one, this one, you also could put in some diffuser blends. Like it's, I would, I don't really care for it by itself, but a drop or two of it with some other oils would be refreshing. Just like basil is for me. I like basil and diffuser blends too. But anyway, so lots of ideas for this one. So, okay. So emotionally it's an oil of spiritual integration can help you feel balanced and healed. And if you're using it aromatically or in the diffuser, it can help with memory, cognitive function, stress and anxiety, clear breathing, and it will help clear the air. And then topically, it can help with warts, cold sores, headaches, skin infections, circulation, high cholesterol, and balancing blood sugar levels. So some pretty cool stuff. So throw that on your feet. Why not benefit of those things or in the diffuser, right? Okay, coriander. So coriander is a fun one. It really is good for um, helping with with digestive issues. And so if you're if you've eaten too much, coriander is a great one to use. And I love this little recipe here for over, it's called overindulgence tea. And so you mix it up. When I first looked at, it, I was like, holy cow, that's a lot of oils. But then I realized you you mix it up like in a little vial. And then you just take two drops of that little um, mixture to put in with the tea. So you mix all those drops together to kind of make your own blend and then just keep it on the fridge or on your shelf, whatever. And then you mix it with a cup of hot water, a tablespoon of honey, if you want, and then two drops of that oil mixture and just sip on it, it says until your tummy settles. Anyway, another fun use for coriander is this Latin blend. It's three drops of lime, one drop of cilantro, and one drop of coriander. And that is mixed with like two ounces of something, whether it's salt or olive oil, avocado oil, whatever it is that you're wanting to, um, wanting to um, create. So make a nice salad dressing too, right? And then maybe cook some chicken with it or something and shred it for tacos, whatever. I don't know. Yummy idea there. And then the coriander diffuser blends. Again, I love this one in the diffuser, especially when it's combined with something else, like just simple things like coriander and lime. How yummy is that? Um, or with some bergamot and grapefruit, like these are just some 
Yummy diffuser blends. Those are so good. I would want to do all those. Anyway, <laughs> I do love the smell of this one. All right. And then let's see. So coriander is also found in the adaptive um, capsules, which so I think that's so interesting. So that one can also help with feelings on emotional level of fear and irritability. And that's if you use it topically or um, aromatically. Um, it can also be used topically to help with um, joint pain and some sore muscles, which is interesting, right? It's so funny when we have something, an oil that we use to cook with, that we can also use for such amazing things like sore muscles. Anyway, um, let's see. It also helps maintain a healthy insulin response. So just like what was the other one we just said, the, um, the holy basil, the Tulsi is also good for that. Um, yes. And it says emotionally use coriander to promote feelings of integrity and being true to yourself. So it's a good one. All right. So next we have neroli. So neroli comes in a touch form, meaning it's in a roller and it's diluted looted down so that it still is effective yet safe to use and and keeps it um, more cost prohibitive as well so neroli is an oil that you can dilute down and have it still be super effective so that's why they um, sell it that way so here are some great little um, uses for neroli from doTERRA this one is really good for um, anxious moods so uh, it is also in the adaptive blend, which tells you that it's good for stress, grief, shock, irritation, overwhelm, all those things. Um, and so you can also wear it as a perfume because it's a beautiful, nice floral scent. So you can wear it as a perfume and it will just help, right? Bring you back to center. Um, it's also good for your skin, um, particularly wrinkles, skin rejuvenation. I've seen it big on that one. Blemishes, eczema, rashes, and scars. So neroli is also a libido booster if for both men and women. Um, it also helps with high blood pressure, insomnia, tension, headaches, and muscle cramps. So, and then emotionally, it can help create feelings of patience, empathy, kindness, tolerance, and resiliency. Good stuff. So yeah, just a good one to wear as a perfume, in my opinion. It's great. All right, next we have turmeric. So turmeric, the best way to use this one is internally, I think, but we've got a few different uses here for you. Um, so we got this fun little face mask DIY recipe. That's just, I think it's so funny. It's just flour, turmeric, honey, and yogurt. And if you can't use flour, like you have a gluten intolerance or something you can use, it says um, like a rice flour or ground oats, if you have some gluten-free ground oats. Anyway, so just mix it all together, apply it on your face and let it dry for 20 minutes. And then scrub it off to, to rinse and add a moisturizer on after. Kind of fun. And then, um, okay. So then over here, we have these turmeric veggie caps. This is a brilliant idea. Lady put this together. I think it's so smart because this shows you there are so many different ways that you can use turmeric internally where it benefits you. So, you know, we've got a brain booster, immune booster, um, you know, one helping with, with, discomfort and pain one helps with respiratory a detox and like a cell a cell regeneration one right like i mean how awesome look at all these benefits so i take this one internally every day but in the um the dual um capsule so if you want to save some money make your own capsules and use it well it be so it would be a little bit different anyway you can make these ahead and throw them in the freezer right so that the veggie caps will stay intact um, and then have them all ready for the week or the month or whatever, how many you want to make up ahead of time. So, oh, and another thing that isn't listed here that it can also help with internally is helping with glucate glucose and lipid metabolism. So good stuff there. So, and then topically, it's also really good for your skin, hence the face mask recipe. So it can help clear up blemishes and also help against abnormal cell growth. So I mean, the face mask is great for, you know, the teenager as well as grandma and everybody else in between, right? It's great. So really, really good one with so many benefits. All right. So next up we have ginger. So ginger, I love this one in the fall to put in the diffuser. 
So we have some really fun diffuser blends. Again, I just typed in ginger doTERRA diffuser blends and get those great recipes from doTERRA. Thank you. Um, there's a ginger snap recipe that I really like. I don't know if it's that one or not, but Google that one too. Ginger, you know, ginger snap diffuser recipe. It's really good. Anyway, and then um, I do like this. This is a fun little Asian blend. So it's basil, lemongrass, and ginger. And you could use that to make, again, a salad dressing, something to cook your meat in, whatever it is that you want to go with a little Asian theme that you have going on for dinner. Um, and the thing is, I didn't mention this before, but when you're adding your oils to your salt or oil, whatever it is, do it at least 30 minutes before you want to use it because it will, as it sits, the flavor, um, kind of permeates through the whole substance of whatever it is. And it just allows those flavors to marry, if you will. And it just enhances the flavor and becomes more rich. So when I'm doing it with a salad dressing, I'll make the salad dressing and then let it sit for like an hour. And then it tastes so good. So amazing. Anyway. Okay. So ginger. So how else do we use this one in our house? My husband loves to put this one in the bath when he's not feeling well. We also love to use this one combined with peppermint for motion sickness. You can use it equal parts. You can put it in a roller, apply it to your wrist, back of your neck, temples, whatever. Um, and it is so funny. So, um, oh, of course, digestive issues as well, right? It's kind of good for every digestive issue, but especially the motion sickness is what most people think of it with. But um, so... Um, and then if you're using this one topically, you want to be sure to dilute it because it can be a, um, a stronger oil, just test it on your skin to make sure. But, um, I always good with dilution and then ginger is actually an oil that is really high in sesquiterpenes, meaning it has that ability to pass the blood brain barrier. Myrrh is another one. I didn't even mention that, but, um, we talked about that a few slides back here, but ginger is another one. So it's really supportive to the brain. Um, it's, it can help with memory and neurotransmitter deficiencies. It's good for circulation. So you could add some to a foot cream or whatever. Um, and then emotionally ginger is very grounding and it's the oil of empowerment. Love it. Okay. Next up we have clove. So clove right along with ginger, right? It's another good fall slash winter diffuser blend. Some really good ideas here with the clove diffuser blends from doTERRA clove is really, really good. And another great one from, from, um, Jade blade and Baldwin. She has these great, great things that she's put together. So wonderful. Anyway. Okay. So clove is really good for the gums and the teeth. So this one, I love to add into the oil chews as well. My oil pulling chews. And for those of you who don't know what that is. Okay. I should point that out. So oil pulling is where you just take a tablespoon of a hard coconut oil. And if you're just starting out, do half a tablespoon and work up to one, but, um, and you put it in your mouth and kind of let it turn to liquid. Um, and then you swish with it for 20 minutes, which sounds crazy, right? 20 minutes. How do you swish with something for 20 minutes? You just do, I don't know. Anyway, and you work up to it. So maybe start with 10 minutes, but work up to work up to 20. And then you spit it in the garbage so you don't want to clog your drains or anything. But anyway, it it help is so good for your oral health. And there's so many reasons to it. We should do another whole class about that. But anyway, it's a great practice. Google it. But adding an essential oil to it can really enhance oil pulling benefit. Anyway, and clove is a really good one to throw in there. I also love to use clove for when I'm going to the dentist, if I'm having any work done. Um, I really don't. <laughs> don't love that pink numbing goo that they put like on your gums before they give you the, the shot of Novocaine or whatever. So I will take my clove and will numb the area and never need that pink gross goo stuff and the topical, <laughs> topical anesthetic. And then, um, the, sometimes I do the whole thing. If it's a smaller, you know, just a, like a one surf, one surface filling and, you know, not, not too crazy. Then I can do it. I'll do it with no, um, no numbing and just do my clove because it's anyway, it's amazing. I've used it for lots of dental, dental things. Okay. So what else? Um, oh yeah. So you can use it topically on site to help with discomfort. If you're having, if any of the kiddos are having shots or you are or anything like that. Um, 
and just be sure to use it when you're, or sorry, dilute it when you're using it topically, because this one, it can be a hot oil for, for most people. And then a lot of people like to use clove for thyroid support. So either internally or topically. And then emotionally, clove is the oil of boundaries and can help if you're, if you're struggling with victim mentality. So another good one. Okay, next up we have Litzy. This is one that you can't buy currently, but it's been, um, it's been available a couple of times. I think like if you got 200 PV, you got a free. Um, anyway, there's been a few times you've been able, we've been able to get it. And it's found in a few different blends. It's found in Abode, um, Arax, DDR Prime and HD Clear. Oh, and Stronger too. So, um, but occasionally we can get this one as a single oil. And so this one is very high in antibacterial properties, which makes it great in the diffuser or in a homemade surface cleaner, hence why it's in the above blend. Anyway, it can also really help with the winter blues, motion sickness, athlete's feet, foot, and brain fog. So for brain fog, you're gonna apply, dilute it and apply it um, across the forehead. Anyway, and then another idea um, I also read was for uh, menstrual discomfort. So diluted and applied it topically just to the abdomen. Lots of good ideas for this one, right? So love these diffuser blends as well that I found. I mean, stay away germs, let's see, and frankincense can't be that. Um, elevate your mood with some frankincense and citrus bliss. So just it seems like some really good ones there. So if you have this one, if you got that one in a, one of those promos, we're able to get it, then put it to the test, put it to use. Okay, Palmarosa. This was another one that we got back in 2020. And um, it was a free product of the month. And then a few people request this one. So there's a few little diffuser blend um, recipes here. So I think my favorite one is this one here, Fresh Spirit on the left. So Palmarosa, Juniper Berry and Grapefruit. Um, but let's see, lots of other digestive support. Let's see. Um, food helps with food absorption. You can add to your bath with Epsom salts. If you're having, if, if you're struggling with nervous exhaustion, you can also add it to your lotion as this healing hands cream here, where it really helps. Let's see, they add it with lavender and Roman chamomile. Oh, they added it to the rose hand lotion. Oh, that's really nice. Anyway, really works with dry skin and helps improve circulation. So there you go. Um, and then it blends well with fennel lavender, wild orange, patchouli, and grand, green mandarin. If you, so if you want to make your own diffuser blends, those are some good ideas for you. All right. And then lastly, we have hyssop. So hyssop was available at Christmas time. You could buy it just by itself. You can also buy it in the ancient oils collection. So, um, it's not one that we have all the time or very often. And it only comes in this cute little two ML um, bottle. It's adorable anyway. And it has the child safety cap on it, lock on it. So it looks even bigger than it is. But anyway, such a cute little bottle that it comes in. So as you can see, there's not a whole lot of information on this one because I had to go find this from doTERRA Malaysia for the hyssop diffuser blends, but um, still some good ideas there. Um, so let's see. Oh, here was, this was some good information I found. Okay. So hyssop was long regarded by both the Greeks and the Hebrews as a sacred herb. So the Latin word, um, hyssopus is likely related to the Hebrew, um, um, azahab. I'm totally butchering this. I'm sure meaning holy herb. And if you smell it thinking that it's more of an herb, it does smell herby. So when I was smelling it at first, I was like, oh, I don't really like the smell of this. And it, to me, it smelled like a weird tree oil. But once I knew it was an herb and I smelled it again, I was like, oh yeah, okay. I'm liking it a little bit better here. It is smelling more like an herb to me. Anyway, so the leaves um, of the hyssop plant are known to be some of the oldest herbs used by human beings and are still used commonly by beekeepers to produce a rich and aromatic honey. So a few different ideas of how to use this one are you can combine it with Arbor Vitae oil and lemon oil and uh, to make an aromatic wood polish, which I think sounds great. Um, you can also apply a drop of hyssop to your pulse points during medication practice for peaceful 
um, calming aroma. Anyway, so lots of other ways to use it too. It looks like, you know, you can use it for mental clarity. I always need some of that, some, some tummy troubles. It's always good for everybody. Um, yeah, lots of good ones. So it looks like meditation would be a great way to use this one though. Okay. And so here's a little, I love this little oil chemistry wheel because it shows you how, how similar and yet how different some of the oils are that maybe we don't think are. So for instance, your geranium, you see under clarifying here, geranium and rose are right next to each other. So did you know that geranium can be used to substitute for rose? So it's called the poor man's rose. So you can use it to substitute for rose or helichrysum. Um, and then, you know, obviously some of those, you know, cilantro and coriander, we're expecting those to be similar since they're pretty much the same there, but yet different. But, and then even to see like, hmm, let's see, for instance, basil and, you know, marjoram. So two herbs right there that are more clarifying, but then compare those to, um, oh, now, where did that other herb just go? Maybe I was, oh, dill, for instance, which should be under soothing oh, and energizing. So, and fennel is also an energizing, but, oh, I know what it was, thyme and oregano. So those are, those are more in the protecting um, part of the wheel anyway. And then again, with like the, the fur oils, like see Douglas fur is an uplifting, but then Siberian fur is in restoring. So it just shows you how different some of those are that may be from the same, you know, we kind of think of them as the same genre, right? The same classification, like they're both fur oils, but yet they have such very different um, chemical properties and have and therefore have such different benefits for the body. Anyway, so it's great. It's kind of fun to look at. And you can just Google this doTERRA oil chemistry wheel. If you want to take a closer look at it and stare at it some more. <laughs> All right. So that's all we have for tonight. I'd love to hear if you have any other oils that you don't know how to use, or maybe you need some more ideas for, I'd love to help you out. So drop me a comment or send me a message and we can help you work that out. And then we've got a few Facebook live classes going on on our Facebook group. We've got, that's our next one. And then I'll be back here, um, the end of March for some green cleaning tips, but anyway, that's all we got. And so, uh, let me know any way that I can help you and, and serve you and hope you have a good day. Okay. Bye.